Hey everyone, my name is Christy and welcome to my corner. Today I'm coming to you from my baking corner and I'm surrounded by drying um, purple hulled peas, which feels very southern to me, and a steeping ginger extract because of course I am. Um, and I want to talk to you about this cookbook. It is called the National Cookbook. And according to this version, which was published originally in 1856, this of course is like a reprint from the out of copyright PDF version. Um, but according to this version, it was written by a quote, lady of Philadelphia, a practical housewife. And she is quote, a lady in whose judgment we have the most unbounded confidence pronounces this the only cookbook worthy of a housekeeper's perusal, according to Graham's magazine. Um, so this is the ninth edition. It was originally published, the first edition in 1850. Um, and like I said, this one was 1856. So I found this at a local, you know, discount store, essentially. I think I spent $3 on it because how could I not buy this for $3? And it has some amazing recipes in it. And I've been thinking about this book all summer. In fact, through the COVID pandemic, I've actually been sending postcards to my friends and I've been including a recipe in each postcard. So I thought, why not make them? I love food history. I love making historical food. Um, I teach a food history course in, um, at my university every, every couple semesters. And this just seemed right up my alley. And I thought you all might enjoy some historical cooking. So it has some really great recipes in it. And I think the one that I want to start with is uh, on page 194. It's recipe 376 and it's jumbles. And jumbles were uh, featured in an episode of the Great British Bake Off. Um, I don't remember which season it is, but it was like their Victorian, you know, it was their Elizabethan season. Um, and jumbles were featured in that. And so I think that'd be really fun to do. Uh, it's one pound of sugar, three quarters of a pound of butter, one pound of flour, five eggs, and one tablespoonful of rose water. I may use vanilla extract instead of rose water. I don't like rose water. I don't like cookies that taste like rose. We'll see, we'll see what I come up with. Anyway, so I think that's what I'm gonna do this coming weekend and I'll film it and post it next week. But there are also some really terrible, terrible recipes in here. Things like hogshead cheese and pickled everything and um, tripe, lots of tripe, things like that. So uh, I'm not going to cook the things that I probably won't eat, but I want to just, you know, get started. There are pound cakes and rolls and breads, and I think all those things would be really fun to cook out of this. But the title of this video is Who Wrote This Book? Because the book is anonymous, at least this version is anonymous, and I'm a medieval historian, so I don't really know much about, um, you know, 19th century American cookbooks and cooking ways. And so as a historian, though, I'm curious, right? So I decided that I couldn't talk to you about the recipes in this book without at least doing some minimal research on the book. And so I Googled this book and I discovered that we do know who this woman is. And I discovered that this woman is freaking amazing. So. The woman who wrote this book is named Hannah Mary Bouvier Peterson, and she was born in 1811 and died in 1870. And we know that she wrote this book because in a later version that was published posthumously, her husband wrote a preface for it. And so I have an electronic version of that. It's held at the University of Michigan. And so I'll post a link to this version below. Now the dating of this version is weird because in the preface, it's clearly written uh, or published rather after her death and she died in 1870, but the dating in the catalog is 1866. So I don't see how that works. Something must be wrong, um, but that, that's how it is. But I kind of want to read some of this preface to you. Well, no, that's not what I want to do first. The first thing I want to do is read the title page of this, and then I'll read this preface to you because the preface is really sweet. The National Cookbook by Hannah M. Bouvier, author of Familiar Science and Bouvier's Astronomy and A Practical Housewife. 
And so I read that and I'm like, oh my goodness, this woman is writing science textbooks. So these two science textbooks were used by schools in the 19th century. And the familiar science was before her death attributed to her husband who was a doctor, and I'll talk about him more in a second. I didn't have a lot of time to look her up a lot today, and I do want something to talk about while I cook this next weekend, so I'll give you more, more deets on her later on. But how cool is that, that this woman who's writing this cookbook, and she wrote at least one other cookbook for like the new housewife, um, wrote science textbooks for students. And one of these, one of these textbooks, I don't remember which one, sold over 200,000 copies in the 1850s. That is bonkers. So anyway, so I came into this research thinking I was going to like find a little old lady writing cookbooks and I come out of it realizing that there's like a science author writing these cookbooks, which is amazing. Oh, and she's from New Jersey and I'm from New Jersey. So that's also amazing. Okay. Let's read this preface because it's absolutely adorable. This collection of receipts, which has long been known as the National Cookbook, was written by Hannah M. Peterson at the suggestion of her husband, Robert E. Peterson, M.D. Mrs. Peterson was eminently qualified for this task as she had been taught by her mother, one of the Miss Whittyfields, a family which has been long and favorably known in the city of Philadelphia for its skill in all that pertained to the culinary arts. Um, I tried looking them up, but I think I spelled it wrong, and so I will hopefully have more information about them next week. When this work was prepared for the press, she declined to let her name appear as the author from her great dislike to notoriety, observing, quote, that a woman should never be known outside of her home, unquote. As her object was not to give receipts for cooking French dishes, but for teaching how the good, substantial meat, game, and vegetables of America should be properly prepared and tea cakes as are known and esteemed by the American palate. The name proposed and adopted for it was the National Cookbook. Uh, and then it talks also about how she focuses on, medicine, on, on recipes for sick people. But we find out in the next paragraph that her father is the late Judge John Bouvier. And so I looked up John Bouvier, and I'm thinking a judge, you know, maybe he'll be available. John Bouvier was apparently a really famous lawyer who wrote like a legal dictionary, the most recent printing of which was in 2012. And then it ends, as the author is now, now deceased and a new edition of the National Cookbook is called for, it seems right and proper that her nom de plume should be appended to a work which will teach the daughters of America not only how to cook, but perhaps another lesson not less important and valuable that the art of cooking was one of the most important of all arts as every man is what he has in his plate. Robert E. Peterson. So I'm going to dig into this book in the next couple weeks and who knows how, how long it'll take me to, to do all the recipes that I want to do. But my plan is to bake them over the weekend, film them, and then have them up on Tuesdays with a little bit of history about this time period and maybe about the, the food. So this is episode of one of historical baking, and I hope that you enjoyed learning about Mrs. Peterson, and we'll dig deeper into the good and bad recipes in the coming weeks. But I just wanted to share this with you, and I'm so glad that I decided to look this author up because you never know what you're gonna find. So I think that's the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching, um, and thank you all for everyone who subscribed and commented on my floss tube um, and on my other baking videos. I appreciate the support. It was really fun recording, and I hope that if you're not subscribed and you want to learn more about historical baking and explore this cookbook with me and the Petersons and Bouviers and maybe the Whittyfields if I can find out more about them, uh, that you will subscribe. And um, I think that's all for me, so I uh, hope you all have a good one.